Um, this is not a very cheery conversation, potentially, uh, <laughs> to have. Um, we talk a lot about Putin might do this, Putin might do that. And, of course, no one can look into the, the soul or the psychology of someone, particularly someone as erratic and autocratic as, as Vladimir Putin. But we have to try and measure the risk, don't we, of, of could he do something spectacular? Could he introduce a nuclear strike into the equation in Ukraine? How do you go about even trying to assess the risk of that? Well, for starters, we need to have a bit of humility. As you say, uh, we can't understand what's going on inside uh, another person's mind. And when it comes to nuclear war, what is going on inside such another person's mind is really the heart of the risk. You know, nuclear weapons are launched when people who have uh, authority to launch them decide to, to do that uh, and when their launch orders are executed. And that's what it comes down to. Fortunately, there is not a lot of precedent for a nuclear war. The only nuclear war that there uh, ever has been in history was World War II. This is Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which, you know, it's certainly a good thing that there have not been many nuclear wars over the years. On the other hand, that does make for a bit of a data problem when you're trying to do a risk analysis. Um, and so we need to be cautious in the conclusions that we reach about what the risk might or might not be. But the bottom line is that we know that the stakes here are very high. And so given the, the circumstance that we're in, the, the crisis in Ukraine, uh, this is absolutely uh, an important risk to be paying attention to. Would you agree with Biden that it, it, it is the largest level of risk since the end of World War II? Uh, it's a very difficult one to, to assess because the, the history of the Cuban Missile Crisis and, and other past events have, have been studied at, at great length. And uh, one thing that we've learned from that history is that the risk ended up being, in some cases, larger than it seemed at the time. Maybe in some cases it turned out to be not quite as large. Um, we don't know how dangerous the situation is right now, and that's something that... Uh, you know, assuming we, we as a society make it out of this intact, that's something that the historians down the line will be able to study. Do you have a sense that, can we work out the, the likelihood of if Putin were to order a nuclear strike, A, the likelihood of people around him following it, so do we have a sense of what the, the, the machinery around him would be, and B, the sense of the ability for the West to intervene in advance of it? Those are those are both good questions. On the first question, I'm not the expert on this, but my understanding is that in all likelihood, the orders would get carried out, if not by the first person, then by the second, and if not by the second, then the third, if there really is determination from the top to execute the or um, uh, to have the order followed. With the caveat being that if there is um, you know, some some trouble in the palace, if there could be a, a removal of Putin from power, uh, then that would that would change things. Perhaps there is a, a critical mass of people who will go along with Putin, but only so far. Uh, we have no idea. I mean, th we can speculate, and, and people do speculate. That's that's not a question that I have uh, the the answer to, though. And on the, the West intervention, would we be able to intervene before the launch order is executed? I really doubt it. I I really don't think that is something that's within our capabilities. The the Russian nuclear arsenal is too large, too widely distributed. Um, stopping a nuclear attack uh, is not an easy thing to do, and, and especially for a country with as uh, large and sophisticated of a, a nuclear arsenal as Russia. They have the largest nuclear arsenal in the world. Is what